Hey guys, uh, I'm Jonathan Hobson with Gordon Food Service. I'm uh, the culinary specialist for the west coast of Florida. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about oysters. And you know, when I think about oysters, when I was a kid, uh, my dad used to take me out on the boat and we'd go to Bull Bay and we'd actually harvest our own oysters out of the water. And I can remember thinking, he was a little guy, you know, the flavors of oysters and the complexities. You know, as I've gotten a little older, I've really become passionate about oysters and to sit down and be able to cook with oysters and work with oysters and just and see the the notes that come through that you can actually portray in your dish is something that's really special to me. You know, another thing that I really enjoy also is Cajun food. And Cajun food, you know, with the spice and the French influences that come into the whole Creole uh, cuisine and working with oysters and putting the two together for a phenomenal dish is just something that's easy, fun, and there's flavors you can't get everywhere. So anytime you're thinking about oysters, you always want to make sure that you've got a good balanced dish you know your flavors, you know your profiles, and you understand the, the regulations behind oysters. If you put all that together and you put a dish together, you're gonna have something that's very, very delicious. today is we're actually gonna bread them and my inspiration was from New Orleans as a oyster po' boy. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take these oysters right here and we're gonna pull them out. Okay, you can look at them. They're nice, they're hearty, all very uniform in size. And we're gonna go ahead and do five of them because five odd numbers always look more appealing to the eye on the plate. We're gonna just separate these little abductor muscles down here on the bottom. After these are separated out, kind of work them a little bit. You see that nice oyster liquor right there on the bottom? We're gonna take them, we're gonna run through a standard breading procedure, okay? Standard breading procedure, there's exact ways uh, about breading items, so we're gonna go right to the flour. One hand wet, one hand dry. We're gonna go from the flour into the egg. This guy, I'm gonna switch hands. Take our lid of our fryer off. Back into the dry. Put a nice thin crusty coating on these. Just lay them right in our fryer basket. Now the inspiration behind this dish was really the classic oyster po' boy. So here in just a second, we're gonna mix up a slaw mix. And point we uh, plate these things up, you know, kind of give you that appearance of having a nice meaty oyster with a Cajun classic. Very good. So we're not gonna drop those yet, because remember, oysters you can eat these raw, so there's no reason to cook them for any length of time. What you're gonna to wanna to do is cook these things for about 30 seconds to maybe a minute just to put that crust on them and warm the oyster slightly. Before we drop these down, we're gonna take our shells, we're gonna reserve them a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and make our Cajun aioli. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a little bit of hot sauce, a little bit of blackening seasoning. We're gonna mix this together. We're gonna take on a nice pink color. Now I'd recommend doing this about an hour before service because you really want those flavors to dance with each other a little bit. Mix that up. We're going to go ahead and make our coleslaw. For our coleslaw, we're going to use Marcon Ready, Set, Serve um, shredded cabbage. And we're also going to mix it with a Dijon uh, blackberry glaze. Now, I know what you're thinking. Blackberry Dijon and coleslaw? It's a perfect combination, and the color is absolutely spectacular. So we're gonna mix this up. Now this is, once again, one of these things, when it comes to your mise en place, you can do this hours in advance. I wouldn't recommend letting this sit for more than about 12 hours, otherwise your crunch factor is really gonna wilt away, and as oysters being as soft as they are, you really wanna let these things marinate, but not for too long, so you end up with a great final product. Look at the color on that, it's spectacular. So, 
Now that we've got our coleslaw done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our oysters. We're gonna let those fry just for about 30 seconds. So to plate these, I'm gonna use some pink Himalayan rock salt. I'm gonna put this down in the bottom of the dish. And what's so cool about pink Himalayan rock salt with a dish like this, is, as, as we know, salt also takes on the aroma of, or the flavors of its environment. So you can take these, you can serve these warm, and the aromatics and the flavors will come out of those uh, salt. It's absolutely gonna be incredible. I'm gonna take my oyster shells, line them right back up in the same direction. Things are just about there. I'm gonna pick these up. Oysters. I'm going to cover them with the slaw. Right on top. Our last oyster should be just about there. Remember, we don't want to overcook these guys. Real quick. Set them right in here. Get our slaw right on top. Then we're gonna finish it with our sauce. We're gonna put them into a squeeze bottle. And then once that's done and we have our coleslaw on top, we're gonna take the uh, glaze and we're gonna drizzle it over the top. And now our dish is complete. I hope this helps and I hope it's inspirational. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local culinarians or your Gordon Food Service CDS. Thank you very much and have a great day.